Big John Entertainment, in association with Pullman Media, brings you a musician's podcast. The hosts here aren't the focus. You, the musicians, are. It's all about your music, right here, right now. This week's episode features the music of Anthony Collins, the Fallbrook Kid. This blues guitarist has been playing for years and yet he's only 16. We sit down and talk with him about getting his start, who he got his start from, and where he's going to next. So have a seat on the Dusty Futon and enjoy the music of the Fallbrook Kid. Don't worry about it now, man. Yeah, he's the, he, look at that, look at that. He's professional over there. I assume a singer knows how to set up a mic. Yeah, but that's not his job. Oh, well. This, this, is, this is not Hey, good. I got to pay my due somehow, right? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But, yeah. And the voice you're hearing is Anthony Collins, the Fallbrook Kid. This is the Dusty Futon. Welcome. Welcome, guys. <laughs> how you doing? I'm doing good, man. How are you doing? Good. Good. Thanks for coming down for this. You're up into, or you're up in uh, Fallbrook, obviously, the Fallbrook kid. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> I just had a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Keep up here, John. Yeah. Keep up. Well, I know Anthony um, from, actually, from Backstage 360, one of our uh, sponsors here for the Dusty Futon, and I interviewed you. Actually, I met you way before that. I got. I don't know if you remember this. Uh, you played in El Cajon at, yeah, the, at, at the, the Grand. Grand. Do you remember that? <clears throat> yeah, I do. Yeah. You're the crazy guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the man child. And I was like, that yeah. guy's man cool. Child. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Well, back then, I was a lot crazier than I am now, and I wasn't as broken. I would jump all over the place. I, and... I wanted to ask, did you ever get to go to that Rush concert? Uh, yes. Okay. Oh, no, that one. Yeah, actually, I did. <laughs> I always wondered about that. <laughs> <laughs> what he's referring to uh, is a GoFundMe page I started, uh, was it two years ago? I always wanted to ask him. Yeah, <laughs> I started a GoFundMe page. Hey, help me go to Rush. Help me go see Rush in Vegas. <laughs> and I and asked for like. The station. What? Yeah, well, they don't give us yeah, free not, tickets. Yeah, not in Vegas. It's not like Maybe it used to be. Maybe if they came down here. Yeah, I just wanted a blowout show because it was like their last time performing. And I wanted to have a bl- I'm a huge fan. So I'm never going to see Rush. Good. No. That's, <laughs> I love Rush. Well, we're not here to talk about Rush. But <laughs> <laughs> we're here to talk about this guy. Now, Anthony, you are 16 or are you 17 now? 16. 16 years old. And how long have you been playing? Since I was 10. 10? I thought you started earlier. My God, you're, oh. you're incredible. You're like a phenom. But I think that's reserved for tennis stars. So Prodigy would be the Prodigy. Term. Musician think, prodigy. Yeah. Musical yeah. prodigy. Damn it, I'm a failure. My phone was supposed to be off. <laughs> this guy. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. Well, I'm very honored to have you as uh, the first guest of season five. So that is awesome. And to finally get you on the podcast. Like I said, I met you through uh, at the Alto, Elko and Grand the yeah. first time, but then I interviewed you at uh, an event that was sponsored by Backstage 360 and also Boogie Magazine. Mm-hmm. And you performed there. Yeah. And man, this guy live is incredible just as good as he is on any of the music you've seen so gotta see it. what got you into the guitar other than your dad well he didn't my dad didn't do nothing no no he didn't even like you know ask <laughs> if i wanted to you know <laughs> the the thing was growing up it was like you have to play a sport you yeah know? so so i did you know baseball for five years and and football for eight years and i didn't want to do high school football and so i i, I got into guitar when i was about you know 10 uh turning 10 and i just i just like wanted to play what i was hearing you know on the on the you know i had i had a bunch of cassettes you know and and cds well well, you're 16 years old and you had cassettes oh yeah six years ago still having cassettes yeah yeah that that came i I kind (laughs) of took them from (laughs) that makes sense and there's like there's like van halen there's zeppelin there was you know james brown there's everything (laughs) the good stuff and then, uh, so I, I, I always, I always, you know, wanted to kind of play what I was hearing just to see how, how they did it. And you just kind of had a knack for it, right? Yeah. I ended up liking it. So I just, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and you've, uh, you've trained with a lot of really, uh, quality people up there in Fallbrook, right? Uh, yeah. Not only in Fallbrook, you know, all, all over, you know, Southern California have had the honor to, uh, to work with, you know, who's you, who've you worked with? Uh, I'd have to say f- it starts off with, uh, Larry Robinson, who, who said, unfortunately passed away oh. a few years ago. And, uh, you know, it was like, that was the basic, that was like, you know, <laughs> that was right there, like the, at the roots of everything. Just the rhythm and how to strum and all that <laughs> stuff. 
And then I met this other dude, Paul Alvarado, who's a great friend of mine. Yeah. Uh, we play together. We still we do gigs and stuff together. But I met him at a jam when I was, you know, only playing for a, not even a year. And he's the one I kind of took up all the lead chops from just by watching him and playing with him every week. And, and uh, you know, there's people that give me advice and help me out, like uh, Gino Mateo. Uh, right now I'm actually taking theory lessons with uh, – Dave Blackburn, uh, if you look him up, he's got a studio and uh, he's he's done a lot, you know. That's awesome. Yeah, all these guys, you know, they they really just, you know. So you definitely have a lot of professional experience and it shines through all of your music. And you, thank you, just recently released um, a brand new album, your first album, and it's a full length album actually, mm-hmm. uh, titled "Hitting on all, Hitting All Cylinders." Yeah. Uh, what. What, came, what what brought up that name? I mean, I know we're going to play the song, the lead track, Hitting All well, Cylinders, but where did that come from? Well, uh, the guy mentioned earlier, Paul Verado, he's like, man, he's like, I, I want to write a song called, you know, Hitting All Cylinders or an album or something. And I was like, you know, that'd be kind of cool. And I said, can I use that? I said, I said because because I'll probably do something before you do it. Like, cause we're, we just go back and forth, you know, we, we're like we're good friends, you know? And I was like, I'll probably get something done before you will. And he's all like, Oh yeah, sure you will. And so then I said, Hey, uh, I'm going to start, you know, sending stuff to the printers. I said, can I use it? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> and he was like, he was, he was laughing. He's like, of course. He's like, that's awesome. And I said, all right, thanks, man. So you kind of stole the name. So Yeah. All right, well, let's go ahead and take a listen to the title track of your album that just came out titled Hitting All Cylinders. Straight blues. Oh yeah, this like this. Is this is blues. This more is like the, rock and like blues, rock blues. You know, like this like is more rock and rock and blues. You know. Yeah, but well, yeah, you're right. All right, I I just got schooled by the 16 year old kid. <laughs> yeah, here. that'll happen. Yeah, uh, but you can hear the blues. Oh uh, yeah, the the influence. That's yeah. yeah, and it's just it's right there because you've got the kind of swing flow going with the notes and everything. Now, one thing is when I played this song for Trevor before you got here, he's like, "Who's that singing?" <laughs> oh yeah, he didn't know that you I sang didn't know that too. You sang. Oh yeah, I, I just because the I think the couple of the songs that the songs that I listened to on my own were were all instrumental. Okay, or at least it seemed that way, it, or yeah, somebody else seemed that way, or something. something. Yeah, 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 I don't yeah. know what it was, but I'll I just give you. Kind of, I'll, listen, we're both screwing up right now. Here we are. <laughs> new season, new season, new season. That's yeah. what's happening. We got the new season jitters get, going get on. Get back in the swing of things. <laughs> Let's get back to the music. I 
What's the sound that you use for that? What's that pedal? Uh, you know. I just, I just, uh, what I was using. Uh, there's some friends of mine out of, uh, I think they're out of Corona. They're called Odd Fellow Effects. Uh, they make the Caveman Overdrive, and that, that's that's all I use for the lead right there. There, that's that's all. Well, it's got a good sound. It's got a nice reverb and, and a good just kind of driving sound on that. I like it. Thanks. <laughs> Not to mention the fact that that was one hell of a skilled solo. <laughs> Listen, there's not much more in the music world that can beat a, a heavy guitar solo like that. Well, and the skill, the being able to move up and down the fretboard the way you do, you just and like in, inherently know these chords. It's, it's funny to me listening to it now because I, I remember when I was recording that and I felt like I was playing too much. <laughs> I felt I was too busy. But now listening to it, I'm like, you know what? There's like, there's like, if anything, five note phrases. There's not a lot. No, it's really like. Yeah, you didn't overpower with that I only solo play at the, all. There's like a few notes, you know, and it's like, you know, I, I'm listening to it, going, you know what? I like that, you know. I, I, and the, when I record it, I was like, "Going, damn, I, pl I play, I'm playing way <laughs> too much." And then listening to it now, I'm like, "Going, you know." It sounded good. And and I we recorded this. Uh, that like, was a one take, wasn't it? The solos, yeah. Most of everything was like one or two takes. It it, it was very rare for anything to go to five. Now, Trevor, just so you know, <laughs> that's impressive. Uh, yeah. One or two. In case you Nailing don't know. something on one take is impressive in almost anything. Yeah, and that just speaks to your skill and your talent and also your maturity uh, behind the guitar and when you're when you're actually there because you, at 16 years old, already have the presence of somebody who's been in the business for decades. And or, Yeah, that's no joke. Or it could just mean, you know, we were lazy that day and we didn't want to do any <laughs> more takes. <laughs> well, the humility is, is, is just too Because honestly, that's probably what happened. <laughs> <laughs> like... If we probably had a gig somewhere and we're like, okay, that one will do. You know, I don't. Gotta I don't get know, this but, done. <laughs> no, actually, it was like that for I think uh, back backup vocals, like harmonies and stuff. Yeah. Uh, my and I, I, th I think I had a. I was coming over a cold, and to me, when, whenever I'm sick and I sing, I can't feel like anything, right? But but sometimes I kind of like that because I can, you can hit higher. I notes. can. I I don't know how that works. It's probably it's probably not good for you at all to do that because you'll probably ruin your voice. But but I ended up uh, doing that, and some of the harmonies were kind of high, and and it kind of worked out. And then I had to shoot over to a gig with Darren Greatly at the Coyote, and so nice. Yeah, so like the the, vo the the yeah. vocal, yeah, it was in Ontario. So we did the you went vocals. you went up to Ontario, uh, Ontario, California. Oh okay, yeah. Uh, there I'm are thinking two. Canada. Yeah, yeah. echo. Well, yeah, that's a crazy echo. Where the hell did that go? Now, this is really irritating. Oh, wait. Hold on. That's it. That's why. I got rid of it. I figured it out. <laughs> okay. Echo's gone. We're good. We're back. Barring technical difficulties. <laughs> Jesus. Yep. I feel like such an idiot when that stuff happens. <laughs> I really do. Modern but, technology, man. Like, I, don't, uh, I don't even know what we missed. We talked for probably a good five minutes. Yeah, you know? I, don't, I don't know. Like, the last thing we, we it cut right there at the Dusty Food, to, or not the, the, the Darren Greatly <laughs> story. Did. <laughs> no, we went way past that. Now, the Ontario joke that you made. Yeah, that's, that was, that was, that was where recorded. the recording oh, so stopped. Oh, yeah. See, I don't yeah. know. Oh, yeah. lost so much good info. Anyway, let's get back. Let's just go back. Well, one of the things that we did talk about was your um, your musicianship and who you've been working with. Yeah. And especially like um, your your favorite. You, you named three of your favorite musicians you like to work with. And let's go ahead and name them again. Your bass player, guitarist. And so, so, yeah, the bass players I use, Victor Franklin, mm -hmm. uh, Bruce Borden, uh, Pat Raymond. Yeah. And Pat was the one that you had at the Thunderbird session. No, that was Victor. Oh, Victor. Victor okay. Yeah. And uh, the drummer I had at Thunderbird session was Edward Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I mainly switched between him and, and Dwayne Hathorne. Nice. Yeah. And these are all really experienced musicians about oh, yeah. like theory and knowledge and all that stuff. Yeah. And are you, and we talked about theory and, and I think we missed most of that has disappeared, but to kind of recap that, like you have, you're not, just now starting to learn. Yeah. I, I, I first uh, started, uh, you know, really studying theory just this past year, like starting in like September or something like that. Mm -hmm. 
So if you just started learning theory, when you when you started, did you just pick up and and your fingers just automatically <laughs> knew what to do? How did well, how did like that work? I, I, I um. Well, okay. Like, there's two. There's two aspects to playing music. There's the practical application, and there's the theory. And like you and I've talked off mic, Trevor, that you have no rhythm and no beat. Like you have a hard time finding the down. So what, he's like Steve Martin, like on the jerk. Yeah, like he, he's literally. You, you get him. He can't clap to the beat unless ten people are around him doing it. Yeah. Uh. So, but yeah, but what's interesting is during his music, you felt the natural beat. Like yeah, oh, I yeah. saw you. You were even hitting the down beats. But when you try, you fail. Yeah. <laughs> so, but somebody like that—that that natural feel. Uh, can can bring in kind of the understanding of theory because most of music theory is is kind of common sense. It's about yeah, it's just it really is. Once you learn how to play the music theory, just literally kind of fills in all the gaps. Because because like nine times out of ten, you're already doing everything, and now theory is like introducing names to everything that you're you're already doing. And what that does is it oh, gives you the yeah, yeah, and it and gives th- you the ability. To grow and build your own. That, that's that. basically what you know ha- is happening to me. Everything like I do and stuff, it's like that. That's the name for that. You know, that's the term. You know, and I'm like, you know, coming up with my own definitions before I even you know started uh, working on theory and yeah. And now and it's what like it, helping a lot. What that does for you is when you get the theory behind your application. It actually gives you the ability to grow and mm-hmm. to expand because yeah. You're limited if you don't know how to call something, what to call something. You're limited. You yeah. can't get past it yeah. until you know what it is and how it works exactly. and understand the mechanics. Like, I'm, I'm a decent uh, guitarist myself, de- decent oh, really? rhythm guitarist. Nice. I can put out a good rhythm, but I don't have the musical theory application to guitar, so there's only so far that I can go with it because I don't have that natural talent as well. So now you've got the natural talent that you had – the, you know, since you picked up the guitar and now you're applying the theory and what that makes you is an unstoppable force. <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah. yes, it does. I agree. What do you think about that, humble meister? Um, I agree with that for sure. <laughs> I, I, I do because you know what? There's a lot of, uh, you know, musicians nowadays, you know, that are playing gigs and stuff. Yeah. And... It's kind of funny because, like, you know, most of the musicians I, I meet, you know, that, you know, gig a lot and stuff, you know, locally, and, and so they don't they don't really know any theory, you know. They, yeah. It's all with feel and expression, which is cool. There's nothing wrong with that at all. No. You know, and... Um, well, you're looking at the thing, the diff- one of the other differences between, um, between you and most other musicians, like, locally, that just play locally, is you're thinking of beyond, like, you want this to be your career. Yeah. And most of them generally don't they kind of do it on the side right or are they actual it it could vary i mean it varies there's you know they either do it on the weekends and they have a, a day job or you know they they play music every day of the week and that they just like where they're at and they you know what i mean yeah and it's great you know that, that's the good thing about music that there's nothing wrong you can even do with it yeah there's exactly. nothing you can do wrong somebody's gonna like it no matter what you do somebody somewhere is gonna yeah. enjoy what you do and luckily everybody enjoys what you do I mean, I guess. Uh, I, <laughs> if they don't, they don't understand anything about music because, man, really just the skill alone uh, shines through. So let's get to another track off of your album, Hitting All Cylinders. Uh, and real quick, where can we buy that album? Um, pretty much anywhere online. Like you Amazon, know? iTunes, like, yeah, Google any, Play Music. Yeah, any, anything Are you on like Pandora, that? Spotify? Are you on those outlets too? Uh, I, I think we're on Spotify. Good. And... Um, you know, because a lot of people use Spotify. I for love just, Spotify. Yeah, it's amazing. And just type in uh, Anthony Collins and yeah. it's C U L L I N S. And and of course, if you know you're 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 really old school and you don't you don't use a computer, <laughs> like you know. I know people like that. We then you know show up to one of our gigs and you know we we sell you know. You got merch, any gigs planned in August? Um, I don't know. At the top of my head. Okay. Don't. Well, that's okay. We'll get we'll, sure. we'll get those from you uh, whenever you have some Check games. Check website. Yeah, get them on the, the website. Oh, there you go. Stay up to date on the website. So, Fallbrookkid.com. So, Fallbrookkid. There's the dad. There's, there's Kenny, Kenny right there. Um, all right. Well, let's get to another track. Which one do you want to play? Um, you told me before, but I forgot. <laughs> um, is it Seeing Tomorrow? Sure. All right. This is Seeing Tomorrow by Anthony Collins off of Hitting All Cylinders. <laughs> 
That, that kind of deceleration of the, I don't know what the proper term is for where you kind of slowly go down the scale with your vocals. Tell them what the term is. Yeah. The, that, uh... I told you. I know a little bit of air guitar. I'm good at that. <laughs> Did I it just add? Yeah, no, it's a, it faded okay. out. Oh, it just faded yeah, out. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a weird fade out. I'm like, I turned it <laughs> down, and then I turned it up. There's nothing there. I'm like, what the heck? Oh, what happened? <laughs> so when you when you when you go about creating a song, what is what is that creative process like for you? Do you write all of your own notes? Does Does anyone help you with that? <clears throat> no, I write all my own stuff. Do you lyrics, just get in there everything. and jam, and then yeah, basically like with with the majority of the songs off this album. Uh, so so this album came out in April. Uh majority of of the songs that the process for writing them, you know, it took me about 10 minutes to write each song. <laughs> and then and then to like There's that's a prodigy thing yeah. to say. And then the word the words is kind of like probably the hardest part, you know, I'll I'll probably come up with a few lines every like every couple of days, you know, or something mm-hmm. or you know, a couple of hours I'll be like, oh, okay, I got an idea, and I'll go, mm-hmm. and I'll have just this book, you know, and and then kind of just pick just from all these the different, lyrics. you know. Do you uh do you like record bass lines, like kind of demo bass lines for your tracks as um, well, or so like when I when I'm uh you know trying to introduce some new originals to the to whoever I want to play them with, I just kind of re- record rhythm guitar just on a, on my phone, and um, one of the things that's gonna help too. And this ties back into theories of being able to to chart out 
stuff on paper like yeah. legit you know actually able with, to read and write with, music with the time signature and everything and that, it's funny because we i started working on that with uh uh dave blackburn the guy i mentioned earlier uh we, we were working on that friday morning nice and yeah so so once i'm able to do that then i'll just hand out sheets to them and be like okay here play and and you just they you just glance over it once and you're, you're in. You're talk. I swear to God, it's like it's so funny to me it, that you're you're 16 years old, and it's like I'm talking to a professional musician at, <laughs> really who's is. 16 years old. It's incredible. Like you're you're you know what to do. You're moving forward it the right way, and you're going about it the right way. And I actually, since your dad is sitting right next to you, I have to credit him for that because oh yeah, for obviously sure. he's kept you in line, kept you following the right path, and and uh, punched you in the face. A few yeah, times. I all, mean um, all sorry, those no yeah, child abuse, no child abuse. yeah, all those you know, you know lock locked in the closet you know and <laughs> and you know you're gonna play until your fingers bleed you know the the starve you know the just starving for months and yeah. you know it, it paid off you know i <laughs> I, I, I it's yeah. you know what <laughs> <laughs> keep working on it you know what While you're locked up yeah okay. there you go <laughs> well it's definitely paid off because you you got an amazing <laughs> career ahead of you for sure and thanks um so this album you said the three are these the three major musicians that you play with um i used uh Dwayne Hathorn on drums Bruce Boren on bass and uh you know there's me and a Jody and Jody is he on all of the tracks yeah every every single okay. song and um i had Gino Matteo play on a song mm -hmm. and Daryl Mansfield he's a famous harmonica player he, i i i refer to him as the Jimi Hendrix on harmonica because he does <laughs> he does all these feedback tricks and he, he'll wow like all this cr he'll, he'll make it sound like a guitar does like, he play it left-handed <laughs> <laughs> like does he hold the harmonica left-handed <laughs> <laughs> or does he <laughs> I don't oh, <laughs> what <got> the <laughs> I was joking. He called him the Jimi Hendrix of playing harmonica. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't catch that. <laughs> oh, so he okay. said, this, "Yeah, <laughs> epic failure no. on my part." <laughs> but no, check check out that guy, Daryl Mansfield. He's uh, in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, he's Hall of Fame. Yeah, he's wow. he's a famous harmonica player. Uh, he played on the CD, and I've had the honor to actually do some shows with him uh, a couple years back. And that's oh cool. man, he's, it's fun. Yeah. Well, that's good, man. But, that's good. Yeah, that's who it was on the CD. So what what do you got in the pipeline right now? What's next for you right now? Um. I've been writing new material, and I think we're going to try and lay down the rhythm section for a new CD in August. And just, you know. Already? So in August, just kind of. just <laughs> kind slow. Keep just, pumping them out. Like in August, I, my right now, that's my goal, just to lay down the rhythm. And then, you know, okay, it's there. I don't have to worry about it because the people I actually want to use on it, they're going to be on tour till like January. And so I'm like, okay, yeah. they start September. I, I want to try and do this august get their stuff down and then that way i can okay you know what take my time if it takes a year you know because every time it, i like with the ep or with the hidden all cylinders album it's like i i feel like i wanted to get it done you know so i kind yeah, of i kind of kind of a rush job wasn't i kind of um so, sort of not not Really? Well, because I knew what I, I was, you know, every time I go into the studio, I know what I want before mm -hmm. I go in there. Okay. And that's why it makes it quick. But, you know, I'm starting to kind of be a little bit more, you know. It was a learning experience. Yeah. Yeah. So so this next one, I kind of want to be more free about that and be like in the studio going, why why can't, let's try this. Yeah. Or let's try that, you know. Not as regimented, like Instead more kind of, of free flowing. Yeah, I kind of wanted to be like, what happens if we do this? Okay, we don't like that. Okay, let's turn that off, you know. God, the, the blessings of computers where you can do that, right? You can yeah, just keep recording. That's, that's why, it. yeah. And and I think the one we're going to be at, like, like this CD we did, it's all analog recording. Yeah. And um, so I think like on the EP we did like Pro Tools or... or or you know one of those yeah and so uh I, th I think with with oh yeah adobe that's serious. yeah i i i don't know if i like adobe that to me it was kind of too complicated to figure out because I, I i i take this music class at my high school and and we would use you know all kinds of different programs but adobe was kind of uh different it was kind of i that's the one where you have like this pad right it's it, i think no adobe's uh adobe's got like 
I think you could buy a. I don't know which software Adobe has. Adobe has Photoshop, Illustrator. Yeah, but we're talking music. No, I know. No, no, it's got music. It does does have. I I know there's a music one. It has like this this pad, and it looks like a a dubstep (laughs) pad or something. Oh, oh, a a MIDI board. Yeah, it's and to me it was too complicated to figure out. So yeah, but but I think this this next CD, I think we're gonna go. uh, The studio is called the Shed. It's in Vista. Cool. And. um I That's think cool I think they're like studio. Pro Tools or something. I I think. But well, Pro Tools is the industry standard. Yeah, uh, I think I that's use, what he uses. I use GarageBand because I'm cheap and it comes with the Mac, and it's actually very powerful. Yeah, I I've done uh, like like uh, like I said at my high school. Yeah. Uh, we have you know we'd have a project we'd have projects you know like every two weeks. Okay, you got to write write a song and you know you have to like record it on the computer or whatever whether you use a MIDI to record the instruments or you actually play and you use a mic whatever. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, I I used GarageBand for like, I have a whole thing of uh, a USB full of songs that I could make a vanity album. Vanity is like you know, just guitar, you know, doing yeah. all the melody, you know, no singing, you know. Yeah. I I could easily use those tracks to make. I have like twenty songs that I did in this past the past two school uh, school years. Wow. And it like. And it's just it's something like, you can you can clean up, build it's there, up on. It's and, there, and it's like I may use those songs later. Yeah. If you ever hit writer's block. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I can go. Out. At least for ideas. You know, yeah. The yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And yeah, who knows? Maybe one day I might, you know, have someone mix mix them. Yeah. Because I have the original files, you know, on GarageBand where I go in and tweak everything. Yeah, you can pull them out and give the. Yeah. Well, you can pull out and give the uh, what do they call those uh, stems? Yeah. And uh, give the stems out, and they can import those yeah. into Pro so, Tools and tweak them. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, cool. I, I did the drums on on those with the MIDI. Yeah. And <laughs> I did. I played the bass. Oh, nice. And everything, because because you know I I I could play bass, but I, I prefer not to. Right. And uh, with drums too. But yeah, I saw you uh, actually the first track hitting all cylinders. I saw you lightly playing drums on your on your leg there. That was kind of cool. Oh yeah. Like I, you're I, just I like. like yeah. Just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, maybe I might go back to those USB files someday and have somebody play drums over uh, over it and, and somebody mix it and stuff and put it out. You know, just for fun. There yeah, you go. Why not? Yeah, you can even hand them to a producer and have a producer just kind of tweak them and put their own little feel on it. Yeah, you and and you that. know, even, and if you want to go even a little bit farther, uh, get like a good singer on it or something. There you, know, you go, like get a professional record. singer. Yeah, exactly. Maybe cool. well, you know, you might become a professional singer one of these days. Who knows? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think your chances are pretty high. I think so. I think so. I yeah. like your chances. I really do. <laughs> All righty. Well, let's let's get into uh, a third song here and. Um, we just did Seeing Tomorrow, so let's take a listen to Living in the Past off of Hitting All Cylinders. I knew this day would come When I felt all alone It feels like the doors I've shut With the windows too I held on to a dream that involved all of you I still remember when Times were never bad But now things are said and done You know I'm not mad Everyone I used to know Has gone on their own path Everyone I used to know has gone on their own path
I just love Jody. Yeah. Because he's just like, and he's got those dreads, and he's just like, you see him sitting there behind it's him. It's funny because when I first met him, you know, his hair was just long. And then I didn't see him for a while. And the next time I seen him, he had dreads. And I was going, dude, what the <laughs> heck happened to you, man? You look like you just... Yeah, he had he had it. It was kind of short. It was like to his shoulder. Yeah. And yeah, now he has dreads. Oh, my God. I, I don't know what happened to him. Well, he's just, he's just amazing. He's like he's like to the keyboards what you are to the guitar, in my opinion. Because he just... I mean, maybe oh, yeah. not as good as you. No, he, he's a monster player. You think so? Oh, he, I didn't know so. I've only seen him once. I only saw him play live at the uh, Thunderbird sessions. But... Just watch him. This is like the most confident person just right there on those keys. It's cool. I've tried so many times to see who would be my friend. Through all the people, I never seem to come to an end. Now they all want a piece of you. And turn away when yesterday they wouldn't give me the time of day. Our hope is us, but now tales of that. Everyone I used to know has gone on their own path. Nice. nice. Now I got a question for you about solos. How do you go about writing your solos? Well, the thing is... <clears throat> and well, First question, are the solos you play live, like if you play that song, Living in the Past, live, is that solo going to be the same? Um, most, so I'll pick parts. <laughs> your dad is yeah, like... he's shaking just, his he's head. Like, no, nope, um, nope. I, I, I'll pick parts. Um, I've been getting more into that where I'll pick parts, you know, for certain songs and um, kind of go off of those like certain phrases uh for that particular song because it works and you know because you could play anything you could you could play any note within a scale over uh any chord progression but the thing that really makes it look like you're a real musician is if you're you're playing the right notes yeah if you're you know you're 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 not thinking like a guitar player you're thinking like a musician you're you're thinking to like you're looking for you're creating a vocal rhythm with the guitar. Yeah, you're 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 letting the guitar act like it's the singer right. instead of it just being Yeah, you know? I see I tried to and that's actually uh, the reason I asked that is like I told you I'm a decent guitarist, like decent rhythm guitarist and I've tried to write leads and it literally just sounds like I'm jamming on the guitar. It does not sound like a lead at all. It sounds horrible. Like <laughs> so. like um you know the whole Yngwie thing it it's like sometimes I, I like to do that, you know, where it's like just, you know, just, you're just cutting people's heads off like, you know, you're just going. Yeah. And then other times I like to be like really slow. I like to just take my time and like let kind it breathe because I like vibrato. that space. Yeah. And so, you know, it, to me, it's, it just depends how I feel, you know. Nice. If I'm, you know, on stage and I'm, and I'm thinking about something that just pisses me <laughs> off or, or I'm thinking about like last night I was thinking of I was, we're playing a song similar to this one. It's called I Came Up the Hard Way. And uh, I started thinking about something, and I, and I was getting sad, you know. And I was like, and I was looking at Edward, and I was like, you know, me and him, we all get these look like we get like these. Our eyes are all big, and we're like, and then Let's boom, tear and, the and roof he just off he place. drops it. He just, we just drop, we drop real low, and I'm just like holding on to this note, and it just starts to rise, and it's like, <laughs> and to me it was like this sadness is building, it's increasing the intensity, boom. and then it just goes off, and that's when I go, you know. And 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 basically, you know, when I'm playing fast, <laughs> those are teardrops falling. Those are that's what it is. Is really, it's just just like rain. It's just massive. You know, it's like no holding back. It's just it's it just broke out. You I know? just realized why you're so calm and collected and so mature. It's because the only way you release your emotions is through that guitar. Yeah, that's really it. You know, that's why you're good at it because you you reserve all of your emotions, all your feelings, all of your energy. Even talking about it, he just let a bunch of them out. Yeah, and it's like it's when when that like I mean, like I said, when you have that guitar in your hand and you're focused on you're playing, 
you're a completely different person because you're just zoned in and you are so professional and so experienced in that just right there on stage. It's amazing to see that. Oh, thank you. And then like your, your composure off stage when like I've interviewed you in the past and, and now with even with this, you're just, you're just so relaxed and so chill. And like I said, 16, that's a 16 year old. That's unreal, man. I mean, most I 16, couldn't even drive at 16. You can't drive now. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can drive. I just can't drive well. Legally, you can drive. Legally, I can drive. And I now, have a driver's license. <laughs> and he just became legal to drive, and he's more mature than you. Oh, yeah. Oh, by far. Oh, Hands down. Man. Hands down. <laughs> If you notice, I haven't been talking too much because, you know. I you feel humbled. I, I feel want, like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. no, I will, I'll tell you what I think it is while you're not talking. He he told, he like, he, I feel like there's something going on here. He He's like, I don't know. <laughs> he told me to shut up. He's in charge like, of hey, you. No, he's hey. in charge of you. No, he the, way, says, the way it works, keep I'm your not, mouth shut if you talk, episode. we're taking you to the back yep. room <laughs> yep. and we're, I'm hitting you you're because you, well, yeah, exactly. But, you know, I don't, I save that for when you guys are gone though. I don't that's want what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true, why yeah. he's being quiet. He's like, yeah. I don't want, I'm afraid. What happened last time? I don't want to get put in the closet. I don't want to get slapped again. So, okay, now where, again, we can find everything on your website. What, what's your website again? Uh, you can either type in anthonycullens.com, Cullens with a U, or fallbrookkid.com. Either way, they go to the same place. That's Perfect. Fallbrook Kid, not the Fallbrook Kid, right? I think uh, if you type in it either way, it'll oh, go okay. to Perfect, yeah. So it's yeah, Google it. It'll, yeah, it'll it'll just go type to it into it. Google. Just yeah, Google. Just, just Google, Google it. Google. Google has solved yeah, exactly. the world's problems. Now, what about uh, um, social media? Are you on Twitter, Instagram? Yeah, Facebook? Twitter, Instagram. Uh, at, at Fallbrook Kid. Yeah, type you know either Anthony Cullens or on Instagram it's Anthony Cullens one one word at Anthony Cullens. There's Anthony, period Cullens, and okay. then like Twitter I think is just Anthony Cullens, and and Facebook Anthony Cullens, or I have a page Fallbrook the Fallbrook Kid or. It's yeah. all on our website. Isn't yeah, it? you, it, yeah. The the the, the easiest way, the website, easiest yeah. way. Everything's linked up to the, the website. website. I just like <laughs> to, I just like to fill time with saying stuff. So you know, I just ask you questions. <laughs> oh. What what else has you got? Yeah, you know, do, do you go to do you do you often go to askjeeves.com? Like yeah, <laughs> you like to breathe oxygen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Google man. So Google. do do you drive now? Uh, I have my permit. <laughs> nice. Well done. <laughs> I'm I'm supposed to take one more step like one. like behind the wheel lesson mm -hmm. and then and then i think that. either that same week or the next week i take the actual test driving test yeah, that's August awesome is your test. so we scheduled it so that way i can see what the guy has to say yeah and um you know so that way it's all fresh in my mind like this is what they're going to test you on yeah so let's practice it and then that way this is know. a smart kid man i told you this is a smart kid i told I got, you man i gotta ask about the hair though the, if, if you've never seen him this kid's got hair literally down all the way down his back to the to, Tell me to, the top, ass. to the his top ass. of his well, ass. <laughs> well, I used to have it to here when I was little. Why'd you cut but, it? But here, here's the thing. I used to have short hair, right, when I was little. Uh, I, well, how old was I? Like three? When, when I, he was two or three years old. Tell yeah, why. so so uh, my, my dad's grandma had uh, cancer. And so I, I remember seeing, like, uh, ads on TV, you know, like, uh, what is it? Uh, St. Jude's Saint, cancer. Saint, yeah. yeah, and they show, like, the kids, and they're, like, talking about, you know, cancer stuff, and they don't have hair and, and and I guess when I was little I like looked at my mom and started crying and said how come they don't have hair and I and then I said well I want to give them my hair and so that's that's kind of how I started oh growing God. that's kind of how I started growing long hair because wow. I, I, I used to donate it you know that that's why I grew. You asked me where my hair went. That's initially why I started growing my hair. Out. This, so what they do with in. the two sides you barely had anything <laughs> left what they do with that <laughs> tie it to a horse or something come on bro some horse was born oh, without a mane, so. No. Uh, just, you, you ever seen that 70s show? Yeah. You know Red? <laughs> uh -huh. There was an old guy and some some pot, some that, like, some like yep. spots were missing and he needed some more hair on the sides. They just super glued him on and curled oh. him. Congratulations, Big John. You created a Red Foreman somewhere. <clears throat> oh, my God. Somewhere no, there's a spot they, in yeah. somebody's ass and it's all because of you. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like you're, you're going to get sunburned no more. No, I, I'm actually used to be this way. I used really? to be bald. Like, uh, I was in the Navy for almost 15 years. And, oh, wow. Awesome. And I kept my head shaved because it's just so much easier on the ships. And those barbers didn't know what the hell they were doing anyway. So they just shave it off. <laughs> I just, no, I just I bicked it in the oh. shower. Like, every couple of days, I would oh. run a razor over it. But I started growing my hair out um, October of 2013. Yeah, 2013. Uh, for that purpose, just because I wanted to do at least That's one donation. That's awesome. That's great. And I made a 10-inch donation. 
and uh, and then I was trying to do another one, but then I got cast in a movie where I play. Yeah, you were talking who, to me about that. Yeah, yeah the guy dies from cancer. Or he's a, well, he's a cancer patient. Oh wow! And okay. So being bald is part of the character. So I just said, screw you know it. You I'm just shaving back off. Too, right? Yeah, what he's this is post chemo. <laughs> the character's post chemo. Ah, so then he, he's gonna have to shave his eyebrows, and you know what's gonna be bad? <laughs> yeah. He's gonna be walking around and just they're no be like, hair from the neck up. <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna think that, he's like that a, always, a that always made game. me feel. They're gonna think it. he's like a Aryan brother or something <laughs> when he's walking around. <laughs> I used to I used to worry about that because I'm so big and, and that's it, what I'm saying. Yeah. You're big. Like you got tattoos. Over here. Everybody Urgh. be careful. Yeah, you have tattoos that look like they could be a code for something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's true. But then they'll hear him talk and they'll be like, Oh, oh never mind. This this guy, he's just a big baby. He's a big teddy. Bear. He's a gent- gentle giant. <laughs> big old teddy bear. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, and I really appreciate you coming down all the way from Fallbrook Dude, to thanks chill. Thanks for having us. You know, it's it's cool. I like I like what you guys got going on here. It's yeah, cool. we like what you got going on. Yeah, exactly, and that's that's why we have you here. So. Thank so you. Gonna be tonight. Oh, yeah. So, so yeah. My this this interview is supposed to be you know later. Yeah. But I <laughs> thank you guys for moving it to you know course, to man. earlier because yeah I I've been in contact with Trevor and dude. He's a great dude. I, I felt bad because I kept saying you know what time do we do the interview? Cause, oh, that's cause, the least of my worries. Because because oh, yeah. I I got booked this like really important gig like last minute I got a call and I was like yeah your dad called me uh, and hit me up yeah, via Facebook and, and, I, and I'm like yeah I just. We like, and that's the thing is, this isn't about us. This isn't about me yeah, and, pa- no. and Tyler or Tyler. It's not about Tyler. Oh. Again, <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's on the mic. It's only on the mic. The off mic, I never yeah. call you that. Off mic, I never get called a different name. But no. on the mic, Tyler. It's God, Tyler. I gotta. St- I'm gonna bleep that because I just don't want the <laughs> name Perfect. on there anymore. And it's funny because like we had this on the calendar, and then within this past week, we got a bunch of messages. Oh, can you come? Uh, so and so's band and 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 to cut the they their guitar player can't make it. Can you do it? We'll we'll pay out uh, how much how, however much you want. And I'm like, nah, dude. I I got this interview. You See, know, th- th- and that's awesome. Thank you for doing that because I know we're not paying yeah, you for yeah. this. And and the thing is, the thing is, um, you know, w- this is one thing that gets me mad about some musicians. They get they they have something booked, and then you know whether it's a few days later, or you know. The night before the gig, which is which happens too much. Yeah. Um, not to me, thankfully, because because I pick my people right. <laughs> yes. And, see? and and so here's it the thing. Happened. This is what happens. They'll, they'll they'll call and they'll say they can't make it. And you'll you know, find out that. And, and 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 it's either they're either they're they're being honest, like there's something an emergency. Most of the time, though, they got a gig that's got more money. Yep. Yeah. And, that, and that's honestly that's why I'm grateful that uh, that we're able to book and Trevor works really hard. I got your name right. Trevor works really hard to book guests, and and I'm really uh, honored to have him working for me that's to do great. that. Thank you. And yeah, so like if it's, it's yeah. like if I make a commitment, and this should be with anything, you know, mm-hmm. even outside of music, if you make a commitment, you you stick to it. You exactly. know what I mean? Don't don't go. You know. Well, we're gonna let you go so you can make it down to uh, yeah. was it brick po- by brick? Uh, uh, no, it's Point Loma at the Liberty Station. Cool. So I'm playing with Casey Hensley. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, we we were actually gonna probably start working together a lot more. Uh, we had a, re- a long rehearsal the other night at Ooh. their house, and so yeah, I think we're gonna start working yeah, more. Your dad was telling me off off air that he, you guys have really good chemistry together. I'd really oh like yeah, to I, see it. you know it's it's funny because it's like her and her 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 uh, boyfriend who's the drummer. It's like they treat me like their kid, you know what I mean? And they're young, yeah, they're young. They're like, you know, I think she's 24 and, and yeah. he's he's like in his early 30s and it's like they treat me like they're, you know, their son. They're like we're watching you, you better not do anything stupid or, or you know, and, and and it's fun, they're funny. You know, the, my thing is I am straight up, you know, if yeah. I don't like a person, I'm not going to go hang out with them, you know. Of course. Yep. You know, I'm not going to go out of my way to, well, that to means hit him up or like anything. Me. Or at least you like Trevor. You know, <laughs> uh, of course I'll be uh um uh, well, what's the word? Polite, Cordial. you know, and, and everything, you know. Of course, of course, you know, if they, you know, get a hold yeah, you of you, okay, I gotta or whatever, stop you know. right there and tell anybody who's listening. I don't care how old you are, if you're 12 and you're starting, or if you're 50 and you're playing. This is the well, what you're talking about is the way you need to be as a musician. You need to, that's that's how you become a humble musician. Yeah, it's is also you, the way you need to be as a person. Yeah, that's but, what I'm saying. Because yeah, you're not going to get the you job know? if you're if yeah. you're just sure. if you think you're better than everyone yeah, or you, or you know oh I don't like that person I don't want to work with them you yeah. know that you know that that's not the way to build positive and and you know where I see that a lot it's. It's high school, yeah. you know, yep. yeah. and I'm laughing. I'm like, yeah. why do you guys act like this? I'm thinking, 
dude, that's not how it is in the real world. They're, oh, what do you know? Oh, because I don't ever really say what I do, you know, because yeah. it's like not it's not they're important they're that's cool that's not what's you it's know, not what I'm you're there it. for but yeah no you know so it's not like i have you a don't reason like them knowing who he is well that's cool. well there's not a really a reason to bring it up no unless it's brought up so why am i going to bring it up you know the only way you would bring it up is if you're bragging and trying to get get a, yeah exactly you're not, you're not and, braggadocious yeah. and so yeah they're like oh what do you and i'm like oh what do i know <laughs> <laughs> well i actually uh, get i, I, I actually stuff. actually get to work with you know some some people who are just you <laughs> know yeah, really Take me under their wing and well, yeah, mentoring me and like you know so. If you only knew what this guy has been doing, and from my dad too, you know what I mean. Yeah, you know, and you know, just from everybody that you know, I get to be around. You know, it's like I'm good learning stuff, not only musically, but you know. Well, that's awesome, man. And again, one more time, thank you for coming down. We're going to go ahead and cut this because uh, we've been talking for yeah. quite a while. Th- thank you for having nice me. Heck Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. All right, we'll, we will definitely chat with you soon, and make sure you go. Uh, Go to your website, anthonycollins.com or the or fallbrookkid.com and see the shows that are coming up and yep. go check this guy out. <laughs> All righty. Yeah, that's a wrap. Thank you for listening to this Big John Entertainment production. Please rate us on iTunes and subscribe to Big John's newsletter on Facebook to get all the updates. Don't forget to like our page on Facebook at The Dusty Futon. And also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Dusty Futon. That way you can stay up to date, interact with us, and know exactly what's going on in the world of the Dusty Futon. You can also email us if you're interested in having your own episode. It's really easy to contact us. You can get all of this information on our website at thedustyfuton.com. Thank you again for listening to the Dusty Futon, a musician's podcast.